Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Vinyl Treasures. I'm your host, Johnny G. John Galindo, coming to you live each and every Wednesday, only here on Oldies and More Radio, also live on YouTube. I apologize uh, for the delay. The uh, <laughs> My camera wasn't working. I didn't know why the camera wasn't working. That was not a good thing. Not that I had to, normally don't have to check, but I guess I'm going to have to check from now on to make sure that happens so uh, thank you all for being here it is the uh april april 17th 2024 all 60s edition of the vinyl treasure show featuring some soul 45s out of my collection some requests tonight on this uh kind of a kind of like a dreary cla- uh, ra- it's drizzling and raining here it's like 54 degrees says mostly cloudy but i've been in for most of the, but it's cold out it got it's colder than that it feels colder than maybe because i got a short sleeve shirt i don't know but anyway uh we opened up uh uh from louisville kentucky this band from louisville kentucky called the chateaus uh this was their debut single on the soundstage seven uh record uh label a song called moanin from april 1964 it was actually a cover tune a tune originally done back in 1959 by art uh, blakely and the jazz messengers on the blue note label kind of a jazzy thing but those are the chateaus april 64 on soundstage 7 moaning is the name of the tune it was a big record on uh, waky in louisville kentucky a number 19 record on the survey there but uh, let's open up the vocal portion here again if anybody's new to the program please subscribe to my youtube channel and uh, click the bell to get notifications and don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you folks enjoy what johnny g is doing so let's open up the vocal portion here with this singer a uh, born and raised in new york city his real name roberto Pares, p-a-r-e-s or Paris, or Perez, but he changed it to something that sounds similar. He changed it to Bobby Paris and began recording back in 1961 with releases on uh, some West Coast labels, Magenta and Jarek and Chattahoochee. But in 1966, he had this release on the Cameo record label out of Philadelphia. Both sides are a really pretty cool and this is the this is the intended B side of the 45, which is a cover tune. The song originally done back in 1955 on an Art Roop specialty label by Tony Allen. But let's give a listen to this cover from February '66. The vocal opener, Bobby Paris on the Cameo label, and his rendition of the tune, Night Owl.
There you go. We open up there with Bobby Paris. Bobby Paris from February 1966 on the Cameo record label. Night Owl is the name of the two. Now, uh, the flip side here is another cover. Maybe I didn't have it scheduled to play, but I'm going to play it because it's uh, it's pretty good, um, the flip side here. As uh, I bought this at Louis Silvani's Times Square record uh, store uh, when he was... When he was in Dobbs Ferry, New York. So I walk in there, and I guess he was trying to be like, like the, uh, like Times Square Records down in Times Square. He had records on the wall up in, way up in the top. And I told Glenn, I said, "How am I, how are you going to get that record down? What is that record way on the top there? It was way on the top. It was a cameo, and I couldn't see it. He goes, well, "Hold on, let me get it." So he had like this. Uh, I don't know. He had this like long broomstick with a clip at the end of it. I said, you better not drop it. So he took it down and I looked at it. And I said, well, what do you want for this record? So he says, oh, we want 30 bucks for it. So I paid 30 bucks for this 45. But the flip side is another cover tune, a song originally done by Little Anthony and the Imperials back in 1958. And let's give it a spin here from February 66. This is the intended A-side, Bobby Paris on Cameo Records. It's his rendition of the tune, Tears on My Pillow, Bobby Paris. Cover tunes here on the All 60s edition of the Vinyl Treasure Show. That's Bobby Paris doing two great covers there. Uh, that one there, the uh, Little Anthony Imperials tune, Tears on My Pillow, the flip side, A Night Owl, as originally done by Tony Allen, but that was covered by a lot of uh, uh, artists and singers, did Night Owls. Pretty big record to cover there. But uh, that was Bobby Paris, February 66, on the Cameo record label, and uh, was unfortunate. He passed away on September 24th of 2009. He was uh, 69 years old. He passed away uh, from leukemia. We remember him here on the Vinyl Treasure Show. Now, uh, on last week's Vinyl Treasure Show, I featured a group out of Baltimore, Maryland, called The Showmonts. I featured their uh, debut single, or their their first release, 
on the Bay Sound record label. It was called I Need Your Love. And somebody on my Facebook wall said it's a great two-sided 45, and he was so correct. So let's give a listen to the flip side here before we file it back down in the No Humidity Basement. To have the lead singer on this tune, his name is Milton uh, Duggar Jr., And uh, he also produced the record. This is from September 1967. This first came out on the Caravel record label in August of 67. And this is from, uh, came out a month later, September 67. Charted number 24 on WINN out of Baltimore, Maryland. The Showmonts on Bay Sound. It's called Love is the Thing. Almost John and G almost getting caught here. There you go. That's a pretty cool record there. The Showmonts. The Showmonts, September 1967, have it on the Bass Sound record label. It's called Love Is the Thing, is the name of the two. Let's continue here. I can't tell you much about this next 45. It came out on the Coed record label. It's the same label that the Crest recorded, and Dupree's and the Crests and other groups recorded on the Coed label. But uh, this appears to be uh, this gal's only release. Her name is Diane Coleman, and the tune is written by Ted Varnick. It's arranged by Gary Sherman. Let's go to March of 1963 for Diane Coleman on the co-ed record label. It's called He's the Only Boy for Me, Diane Coleman. Don't they know? He can't. 
March 1963 release there for Diane Coleman. Diane Coleman on the co-ed record label, He's the Only Boy for Me, had to take the toothbrush to that. I don't know why these presses on this record, this specific record, I've never seen a stock copy, though. I have two copies that play... I don't want to say, I don't know how they played. It's not really muddy. I think it's the, it's it recycled vinyl is I think what it is. But anyway, let us continue here. Let's fill our first request here for listener Edmund Williams in Queens, New York. This singer, originally from Memphis, Tennessee, began recording for the Sun record label. Also had releases on the Meteor record label, but uh, he was also the father of of uh, singer Carla Thomas, and uh, he also did some duets with his daughter. His biggest hit, I'd have to say, was 1963 on Stax Records called Walkin' the Dog. Now, Edmund requested his seventh release on the Stax label, seventh of 30 releases on Stax Records, and uh, this charted number six on WTRY in New York City. Let's go to February 65 by request for Edmund Williams, Rufus Thomas... Rufus Thomas on the Stax label. It's called Baby Walk for Edmund. <laughs> That's by request for Edmund Williams there. That's Mr. Rufus Thomas. Rufus Thomas from February uh, 65. What did I say? 67, 65. It's on the uh, Stax record label. That's his seventh release song entitled Baby Walk. I guess we can play Baby Talk next. No, we cannot do that. And uh, let's continue here. Let's fill a request for listener uh, Warren Russell in our YouTube chat room. As this group, originally from Allentown, Pennsylvania, they had eight releases on the Smash record label. You know their biggest hit. It was their debut single called Apple Peaches Pumpkin Pie. But let's give a listen to their fifth release requested by Warren, written by Donnie Marchand, Mark Bacon, and, and this is produced by Jerry Ross. It features the lead of Jay Proctor. They're called Jay and the Techniques, July 1968 release on the Smash label for Warren Russell. It's called Baby How... Wait. <laughs> I got the wrong side here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm here looking. I said, that's not the side. <laughs> it's called Baby How Easy Your Heart Forgets Me. There you go. That's for Warren Russell. How easy 
By request for Warren Russell, there that is the sound of Jay and the Jay and the Te- I was going to say Jay and the Americans. That's Jay and the Techniques, July 1968 release. It's on the Smash record label. Baby, how easy your heart forgets me. That's their fifth release on the Smash record label. Folks, how am I sounding on um, a YouTube and um, and oldies and more radio? Is it coming out? Because there was a I couldn't get my a video to work. So I'm wondering if the uh, sound is okay. It looks like the meters are okay. It looks like they're 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 doing okay. I don't want it to be too loud or overpowering. But uh, Charlene was mentioning something about it not be sounding um, not sounding good. You don't want to have your speakers uh, all the way down, and I don't want to be too loud either. So you got to let me know if it sounds okay. Because sometimes you know with the settings they get messed up with these updates. That's what happens. So if it's sounding okay, okay, Frank, thank you for that. If it's sounding good, uh, then it's good because you don't want it. You know, can't have it too blasting. I don't want it to get. It, it's everything sounds good, very good and clear. That's 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 what I want to hear. There you go. We just heard uh, Jay Jay and the Techniques with Jay Proctor on lead. That's for Warren Russell from July '68. Baby, how easy your heart forgets me. It's a cool record, Warren, that you just picked up. Pretty cool. You know, he was in a, a group called, I think, The Sinceres that recorded for the Jordan record label in 61. But anyway, I digress. Let's continue here. And uh, this next gal, she hails from New Haven, Connecticut, first recorded as Pearl uh, Pearlene Caesar in 1963 for the Amy record label with an answered song to Maurice Williams and the Zodiac's Stay called Go. I don't know if I've ever featured that here. But in 1964, she would sign with Don Costa's DCP International label, had two more releases on that label. But this was her final release on Jerry Greenberg's Green Sea label. And uh, Jerry also produced all her singles. Now, the group backing her up are called The Passengers. They're pro- and... Uh, I guess they're providing the instrumentation, it says here. But uh, there is an uncredited vocal group backing her up. And uh, this is a cover tune. This was first done by Chuck Jackson, a hit for Chuck Jackson, back in 1961. But this charted number eight 
on WAVS in New Haven, Connecticut. Let's go to January of 66 for Pearlene Gray and the Passengers on Green Sea Records and her rendition of the tune, I Don't Want to Cry. Cover tunes here on the All 60s edition. There you go. That's a Pearlene Gray and the Passengers. Her rendition of the tune, I Don't Want to Cry, originally done by Chuck Jackson in 61. This is January 66 release on the Greece, uh, Green Sea Records. And uh, this, um, what does it say here? Uh, Jerry Ah, Jerry Greenberg, who uh, produced these records, he was also a member of the Passengers and later became president of Atlantic Records. There you go. Anyway, but let's continue here on the Vinyl Treasures All 60s Edition for this next a singer from Goldsboro, North Carolina. He had his first solo release in 1960 for King Records. In 61, he replaced one of the Hollywood Flames when they were recording for the Chess label. And... Uh, and I think also they had releases, that same group that he recorded with had releases on the Goldie and the Coronet label. And uh, he left the group uh, to go solo. And, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> he left the group to go solo, and it doesn't say here. So this is on the old, <laughs> this is on the old Town record label from June of 1964. His name is Donald Height. Looks like a whole line is out of there, uh, Charlene. Donald Height on the Old Town label. It's called You Can't Trust Your Best Friend, Donald Height. This is a mean old world From beginning to end You see a man can't trust His very best friend My friend laughs in my face But behind my back He tells my girl That I'm a no good cat You know you just can't trust Your best friend No, no, you just can't trust Your best friend He will cross you Let me tell you now, me and 
my girl We were doing all right Till we met my friend One Saturday night We looked at her In a sly, sneaky way And the girl ain't been right Since that day I said, you just can't trust No best friend Don't know you just can't trust No best friend He will cross you His second release on High Weiss's Old Town record label. I think that's a pretty cool song from June 1964. His name is Donald Height. Donald Height on Old Town Records. You just uh, you just can't trust your best friend. Boy, if you can't trust your best friend, who can you trust? I don't know who can you trust. But uh, he uh, also had releases on the uh, uh, Jubilee Records and he had some on Roulette. And uh, he's got a lot of releases on the Shout label, tons on the Shout label, more on Jubilee. I'm just checking the uh, 45 Cat website for that. But anyway, there you go. Great artist there. Donald Height is his name. Johnny G is my name. I am your uh, Wednesday night disc jockey here on Oldies and More Radio. Also live on YouTube. If you're new to the program, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be back tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock. And uh, I'm doing an all 78 show. So uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going <coughs> to, excuse me, I'm going to ask my listeners for, um, you know, responses if they like it. Because, you know, some of the earlier sides, maybe, you know, people like more of the uh, up tempo uh, rhythm and blues records. But some of the ballads are really excellent, especially those early sides all on their vocals. So I think I open up from 47. I have an instrumental by Doc Bagby, and then a uh, the first one is from 1947 on Apollo. Then I got a bunch on from 49 and 50 and 51. I think my last record is in 56. Maybe 50, or I, I, if I play the Mellow Kings, that'll be a 58 release, but I don't know how far I'll get. But uh, I uh, have some rarities too, and, and a lot of, I, I'd say more than half are only available on a 78, and I have other rarities that I have have requests for that I haven't featured on the normal Saturday night show. So they'll be here on YouTube, so that's the only place you can see it on YouTube tomorrow beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern time till about 3.30 or so. But let's continue here. Uh, with this, uh, we go to Chicago, fill a request for listener Bob Cruz in Maryland, this female duo. They were Barbara Lives, Livesy and Mary Frances Hayes, and uh, they were known as the Duets, and they recorded three for George Learner's Impact record label in 63 and 64. Uh, no, <laughs> it says three, and uh, wait a minute. Yeah, three for Impact Records, and this was their fourth release after Impact Re- Impact Records. And again, uh, same person owned this wonderful label. And this charted number 18 on WVON in Chicago. This is for Bob Cruz, July 64, the duets. The duets on Wonderful. It's called Please Forgive Me.
that is a hopping tune there. Hopping tune from uh, July 1964. They're called the Duets. The Duets on the wonderful record label, Please Forgive Me is the name of the tune. That came out on the sister label to uh, Impact Records called Wonderful Records. And uh, they would have one last release on the Marvelous label. So they made the rounds on George Lerner's labels there. And uh, they, they are three great labels there. The... Uh, uh, the Impact label, the uh, Wonderful label, and the Marvelous record label. Johnny G here on a Wednesday. If you're new to the program, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Tell your friends about it. We do this every Wednesday. Also in tandem with Oldies and More Radio broadcasting there on the stream. And uh, it's uh, requests, as oh, some requests, and other selections uh, by your host DJ here. You can contact me at vinyltreasures at AOL.com. That is the email as we continue and we fill a request for listener Bill Olb in New Jersey as the Platters, when they left Mercury Records, they signed with Musicor Records in 1966. Of course, they had a new lead singer, <clears throat> actually, that replaced Tony Williams. His name was Sonny Turner. They had 12 releases on the Musicor record label, and uh, Bill requested their third uh, this song originally dates back to, uh, what, 1955, I think it was first done, on Checker Records by the Flamingos, uh, January 56. And uh, this uh, this song by the Platters charted nationally, 97 on Billboard, number 20 on WTRX in Flint, Michigan, and uh, it features Sonny Turner on lead. These are the Platters from October 66, going out to listener Bill Olb, their rendition of the tune, I'll Be Home. This is for Bill. <laughs> I'll be home, my darling, please wait there for Beep! 
That's by request for listener Bill O. Bill O. in New Jersey there. That's Sonny Turner and the Platters from October 1966 doing the Flamingos tune, I'll Be Home. That's their third of 12 on the Music Core record label. I have to say a promo here for a Bill Olb. Bill Olb will be my special in-studio guest on May 9th of 2024. It's the Thursday afternoon show beginning at 1 p.m. till 4 p.m. He'll be my in-studio guest collector, and uh, he will be doing his second a gospel special. A uh, gospel spiritual vocal group harmony show with records not only from the 50s but also from the 1960s. He did that on his last gospel show. But uh, he's going to have uh, many rarities, things that have never been heard before on, well, well, or in years. This will be, there'll be first time plays here on the program, also some album cuts. And it'll be vinyl records, will be from the collection of Bill Obe and Gordy Freeman. So you want to see that live stream. Of course, it'll be archived here on YouTube. I don't anticipate any copyright issues, but you never know with the YouTube police here. So mark your calendars. I posted the... Uh, uh, the coming attraction on my YouTube page. So you can click that and you'll get the, uh, to, to remind you. It'll send you an email when the show goes live. So that is May 9th, uh, 2024. It's the uh, second gospel special with my in-studio guest, Bill Olb. He'll be here that afternoon. So stay tuned for that. Let's continue here. Uh, this singer from Bal from the Baltimore, Washington, D.C. area, and uh, he had his uh, uh, he had a release on the federal. Wait, <laughs> what does that say? Uh, the <laughs> I don't know what that is, Charlene. But this singer started uh, recording in 1961 for Columbia Records, but in 1965 he joined a group called the Four Ks, K A Y S. And uh, had this release on the Shrine record label out of Washington, D.C. Now, Shrine, the Shrine record label is a very collectible label for those that uh, are familiar with the Northern Soul scene, uh, owned by uh, Eddie Singleton. He owned the Shrine label. I think it burnt down in a fire, and all the master tapes were all destroyed and whatever. So any of the compilations that are out there are off of vinyl, and they're styrene. Now, I, don't, I only have, I think, I think I have three Shrine records in my collection. And uh, one's the Epsilons, I think. There's this one, and there might be another one. Maybe not. Maybe only two. And I found this one for, I think, a buck at the uh, Stormville flea market up in Stormville, New York. There's an airport there that they have. They used to have this big bash on every three-day weekend. And I would take a ride up there. I'm talking about in the 1970s and in the early 1980s. I think they still have it, but there were a lot of records to go through, tons and tons of records. So somebody had these you know, miscellaneous stuff, so this looked interesting. At the time, remember, I didn't know anything about Shrine Records, but this is one of the early Shrines, too. This is like uh, this is like one o yeah one o one so that's one of the first ones. It's from May sixty five and this charted though charted number thirty nine on WWIN in Baltimore Maryland, arranged by Miss Ray and written and produced by the label owner Eddie Singleton. So let's go to May of nineteen sixty five. This is Leroy Taylor. And the 4Ks, you have to add that, Charlene. And the 4Ks on the Shrine label, it's called Taking My Time. Now, like I used to do, gonna take my time. 
That's on Eddie Singleton's legendary Shrine Records there. That's Leroy Taylor and the 4Ks, K-A-Y-S, uh, May 1965 Shrine Records. Taking My Time is the name of the tune. Johnny G's taking his time here on a Wednesday evening. Hope you're digging on the tunes here as we continue here. And uh, we go back to Chicago for this gal. She was 13 years old when she recorded this tune. It's her debut single on the VJ subsidiary Vivid Records. And it's written by Richard, uh, is it Parker? Yes, Parker. There's a typo there, Charlene. Richard Parker and the uncredited group backing her up. I think Evan mentioned it in the YouTube chat room there. The Dells, they're backing her up. This chart at number 22 on WVON in Chicago. This is her first of two on the Vivid label, November 1964. Let's give a listen to Barbara Green. Barbara Green on Vivid. It's called Young Boy. That's Barbara Green and the uncredited Dells backing her up. That's her debut single. Debut single on the Vivid label, November 64. Young Boy is the name of the tune. And uh, what happened was VJ wanted to promote her, but her parents forbid it. She said, oh, no, she's only 13 years old. She's not going out on the road. You're not doing that. They wanted her to finish school and... uh, uh, she did i think she did and the record would be re-released in 1968 as barbara green with an e at the end g-r-e-e-n-e and it did chart it charted nationally at that time 93 on cash box 86 on billboard 50 on the r&b chart but uh, there you go that's a uh, barbara green her debut single on vivid records young boy johnny g's your young dj i wish well music makes me feel young i'm not really young i'm 65 that's not young maybe it's a Relative to other ages, it is, but it's not. But let's continue here. And we feel a request for listener Warren Russell in our YouTube chat room as this singer. He's from uh, California, and in 1960 and 61, he had four releases on the uh, California uh, ball based ball record label. And this is a song he wrote, came out on the Wah. 
Watusi see label w a dash t u s i want to see label and the label says recorded in kingston jamaica which is probably correct this is his first of four on the Watusi label, but actually the record was pressed. It was probably recorded in Jamaica, but it was pressed in the on the West Coast because it's got a Delta in it. So we'll send it out to Warren Russell, 1964. His name is Billy Hines. Billy Hines on Watusi Records. It's called Eleanor Jean. This is for Warren. Barak Wes for Warren Russell in our YouTube chat room. That's Billy Hines. Billy Hines from 1964 on the Watusi record label out of, out of uh, uh, Kingston, Jamaica. Eleanor Jean. What did I say? Jane. Sounds like you're saying James. Well, it's Eleanor Jean. That's for Warren. Let's continue here on the Vinyl Treader Show. You all know this singer hails from New Orleans, Louisiana, originally recording for the Imperial record label uh but uh here is a later one that he did on dave bartholomew's broadmoor record label which was out of new orleans louisiana and uh, this is his first on the label a tune written by ivory joe hunter this charted number 43 on w t u p uh what is that an a charlene is it w t u p a in Tupelo, Mississippi. I think there's one too many letters there. It's from December 67. Let's give a listen to a late one here by a Fats Domino, December 67 release on the Broadmoor record label. It's called Work My Way. Wait, is that right? Yeah. Work My Way Up Steady, whatever that means. <laughs> Walking on the street with my bottomless shoes I got the patches on my pants and I'm looking like a regular fool But I fill up my application I'm going to school for some information I'm going to work my way up steady Honey, work my way up steady Darling, work my way up steady What I want is you It might take a little time But baby, I'm coming through And I don't care what the people say I'm gonna win your love someday I'm gonna work my way up steady Honey, work my way up steady Darling, work my way up steady Till you're home 
receipt that you get just what make you flee. him on the piano there i think goes way dates back what the 1949 i think with the imperial record label this one's december 67 on the broadmoor record label fats domino a late one by fats domino called work my way up steady is the name of that one johnny g trying to remain steady here on a wednesday as we continue here let's uh, go back to brooklyn new york or actually let's go to brooklyn now with a flip side from last week it's a very rare or in demand 45 it came out on the deep record label and uh, last week i played a side called love uh, love you can't love you can't you hear as done by a group called the moments let's give a listen to the flip side before we file it back down in the no humidity basement this one from 1965 they're called the moments this is on deep records a, a, a rca custom press out of brooklyn new york it's called you said the moments out of brooklyn new york they're called the moments it's on the 
deep record label and it's a it's a rare 45 you said is the name of the two 1965 release by the moments let's continue here actually i played the flip side of this 45 it was one of the closers i think it wasn't last week might have been the week before or even the week before that um a song called good news i was a request for listener paul michelle he requested this group from steubenville ohio they were called the stereos came out on the world artist record label which is out of pittsburgh and uh, the flip side here co-written by the lead singer his name is Nathaniel Hicks. This is uh, arranged by uh, Jerry uh, Granigan. This is charted number 15 on KQV in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Let's go back to October of 63. These are the stereos. It's on World Artist Records. The song is called Mumbling Word. You found someone new And there's now A single thing that I can do There he goes With a prize Right before my eyes And I know Yes I know Those are the stereos. The stereos on World uh, World Artist Records out of Pittsburgh. A song entitled Mumbling Words from October 63. Mumbling Word, not words, right? Yes. And, of course, their biggest hit was a song from 61 on the Cub label called I Really Love You. It was a 45 that my aunt had in her collection. Johnny G here on a Wednesday evening. Thank you all for tuning in. If you enjoy what you're hearing, please give me a thumbs up. Also, if you have not yet done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. We are broadcasting live on YouTube and also live on Oldies and More Radio. Thank you all for being here. Let's continue here. Let's go to Chicago now with this girl group. Pick this one up for a quarter. When I used to go to the 303 Drive-In Flea Market over in Rockland County, uh, they had a uh, uh, there was a uh, old shutdown um, uh, drive-in. It was called the 303 Drive, and there were a lot of rocks. And you know, it was funny because the cars would pull up like in those 
uh, old style drive-ins, they would have like these rocks that your kind of car would have to like be kind of up a little bit to look up at the screen. And then they had the poles on the side that you would put this speaker in on your and roll up your window. And, you know, you'd listen to them to the, those were the old times there, but uh, it was closed down and it was a big, big space. And there was a lot of cool records that I picked up there through the years. And I picked this one up for a quarter. Can't go wrong. This girl group called the Dinette, Dinettes, D-Y-N-E-T-T-E-S. And it appears to be their only release came out on the Constellation record label, a tune written by Maurice Williams. Of course, you know him. He was the lead singer of a group called the the, uh, Zodiacs and prior to that, the Gladiolas. But um, he also arranged this tune. It's produced by Bill Shepard. Let's go to March of 1965, the Dinettes on the Constellation label. It's called New Guy. Of Chicago, they're called the Dinettes. The Dinettes from March '65. Song entitled "New Guy" is the name of that one. Came out on Constellation Records. Let's continue here. You all know this next group from originally from Harvey, Illinois. They had a, uh, the, I should say, their first hit was a song called "Oh What a Night." Actually, it was a hit twice for the group. But this is a request for listener Jim Lampley. But uh, the group recorded for Vivian Carter's VJ record label. But uh, after 1961. Uh, their records were released on the Argo label, but they would eventually go back to VJ Records in 1964, and this was their first of four, and they had four more releases through 1965, I think, on the VJ record label. This tune, um, co uh, written by Johnny Carter, Larry Graves, and, and Mickey McGill. We go to May of 1964 for the Dells. This is by request for Jim Lampley in Texas. The Dells on VJ. It's called What Do We Prove? This is for Jim. You thought 
nothing was fun You did all the guys You know you made me cry But now I think you realize What are you asking? What are we through? Now tell me Who do we hurt? My God and both of us lose Oh, what's the use? Those are the Dells, the sound of the Dells there going out to a listener, Jim Lampley in Texas. The Dells with What Do We Prove is the name of the tune from May 64 on VJ Records. I play the flip side here, which I think is good. I, when I normally, I've never played that side before that Jim requested, but I have played the flip side here. So let's flip it over. This is an instant request for your host johnny g let's flip over that dell's release there first of four when they came back to vj records from may 64 the dell's with shy girl <laughs> You pass me by, but you never speak Sometimes I wonder why must you be Such a shy, shy girl Yeah, 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 shy girl Why do you make me cry, girl? You don't even try, girl And I think I know That's May 64, the A and B side to the Dells. 19, well, their first, uh, uh, when they returned to VJ Records there, Shy Girl is the side I just featured there. The flip side there for a uh, sing- uh, listener, Jim Lampley in Texas. What Do We Prove is the name of the tune. Johnny G proving these cool records were in the 1960s that don't get played anymore. But we do play them here on Oldies and More Radio, also live on YouTube. So a thank you all for being here as we fill a request for listener Warren Russell in our YouTube chat. Now, this singer, his real name, Ralph Bruce Douglas, but when he first began recording, he recorded as Ronnie Douglas, had two releases on the Everest record label, his first one did chart nationally, number 75 on Billboard. Actually, a cool song called Run, Run, Run. Uh, then he recorded for other labels, Adeka 
epic, and this is one he does on the Smash label, and it's a song he wrote, and he goes by Ron Douglas on this release as uh, it's a request for listener Warren Russell in our YouTube chat. Let's go to January 1969 for Ron Douglas on the Smash label. It's called Never You Mind. This is for Warren. Never you mind about this heart of mine Uh, going out to uh, Warren Russell in our YouTube chat from a January 69 release for Ron Douglas, a.k.a. Ronnie Douglas, on the Smash record label Never You Mind is the name of the tune. Then um, uh, he recorded as, uh, again, as Ronnie Douglas again and, uh, wait, and Bobby Lorno uh, on for Columbia in 1971. Also, uh, as Ronnie Douglas and the Ascots on the Tic Tac Toe label. What was that? That had to be from 64, Charlene. Wouldn't be after that 71 release. But anyway, we continue here on the Vinyl Treasure Show. Let's fill a request for Oldies Fan, a.k.a. Joe, in our YouTube chat room as this, uh, I guess she was known as a, a folk pop singer, songwriter, painter and experimental musician uh, out of California originally from is it Vallejo is that how you pronounce that Vallejo California V-A-L-L-E-J-O I need it phonetically in the YouTube chat room but uh, after college she moved to New York City she was discovered by Herb Bernstein who was visiting a camp where she was a camp counselor and performing in the Catskill Mountains. He signed her, or assisted in signing her, to Bob Cruz's new voice record label in New York City, and she had four singles on the label, and uh, this was her first, produced and arranged by Herb Bernstein, and she wrote this song relating to her wanting a dog, but the apartment where she lived didn't allow dogs. So she ended up getting a cat. And she named her cat Dog. And this charted number 22 on Billboard, a big number three record on KPOI in Honolulu, Hawaii. This is from January 66. Her name is Norma Tanega. Norma Tanega. I think I said that right. Right? 
Yes. T-A-N-E-G-A, Tanega. This is on New Voice Records. This is going out to Oldies Fan in our YouTube chat room. It's called Walkin' My Cat Named Dog for Joe. going out to oldies fan aka joe in our youtube chat i apologize for the condition i have multiple mint copies of this record but down in the no humidity basement didn't have time to look today actually i was going to look because i have uh, i wanted to look for my alternate version for a request for leonard mancini that's going to be coming up shortly by the way but uh, i didn't have time today i had my mother was helping me look through some of the stuff down in the basement last night but uh, i didn't get to the tea box but there you go that's going out to oldies fan in our youtube chat room january 66 release on the new voice record label norma Teneg Tenega. Norma Tenega on the new voice label, Walking My Cat Named Dog. They were, t- were talking about getting a cat here, possibly for my father. That might do wonders for him, possibly. But the only thing is, it's going to fall on me to take the cat to the vet and to do the buying and the cleaning the litter box and i don't have time is what i don't have but anyway we continue here on the vinyl treasure show let's fill a request for listener adrian viterbo listening in mexico he's in our youtube chat room this group originally from dallas texas they have some fine releases on the labit label uh starting back in 1966 then in 67 they recorded for wand records they had two releases on wand then they signed with bell in 68 for three more and in the winter of 68 they signed with a chips chips moments agp label which stands for american group production and this was their first of three written by group member harold thomas the lead singer on this is lee jones jr this charted number 24 on the r&b chart a big number three record on katz in st louis missouri this is from december of 1968 this is going out to adrian in our youtube chat room these are the masqueraders the masqueraders on the agp record label it's called i'm just an average guy for adrian
Yeah, they're liking that one there in the YouTube chat room. That's the sound of the Masqueraders. The Masqueraders, that's Lee Jones Jr. on lead December 68 release on the AGP record label. I'm just an average guy is the name of the tune. That is a great tune. I remember hearing that on the radio. I do. And uh, this song was later covered uh, by some gal by the name of Brenda Southall. She did it in 1969. It's called I'm an Average Girl. And uh, it was on the Doing Our Thing label out of Dallas, Texas. So if you know that song, I've never heard that song. I'd be interested to hear that version there anyway. But uh, there you go. That's, um, uh, I, okay, I will do that for Mark Speck. I will do that. But I got a queued up record here for uh, Leonard Mancini here. As we go to Philadelphia now, uh, this group had their first number one hit with their debut single on the Parkway label from 1963 with So Much In Love. Uh, That was their first of eight on the Parkway label. But they signed with MGM Records for um, two releases. This is their second release. Actually, this, well, we'll talk about it. Let's play one side first. Uh, This is their second release, a tune written by Bobby Bloom, John uh, Lind, and Pete Antrell, produced by Billy Jackson and arranged by Jimmy the Wiz Wisner. Now, it features George Williams Jr. on lead. This charted number 15 on WLCX in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Let's go to November of 1966. This is by request for Leonard Mancini in our YouTube chat room. The Times on MGM. It's called A Touch of Baby. This is for Leonard. I've been watching you all night. That's a by request for Leonard Mancini in our YouTube chat room. That's the sound of the Times. The Times on the MGM record label from November 68. A Touch of Baby is the name of the tune. We'll be flipping that 45 over momentarily. Let's go to a flip side of uh, Adrian's request for the Masqueraders as Mark Speck has entered our uh, YouTube chat room and asked Johnny G to flip over that Masqueraders on AGP. So an instant request for Mark Speck, December 68. The Masqueraders on AGP, the flip side of I'm Just an Average Guy. It's called I Ain't Gonna Stop. This is for Mark.
your time That's an instant request for Mark Speck in our YouTube chat room. That's the flip side of the uh, Masquerade Raiders. The Masqueraders on AGP. I ain't going to stop from December 68. Uh, uh, the flip side of I'm just an average guy. Now let's go back to that Times uh, release. As uh, Leonard Mancini uh, asked, for, he said, Johnny G, both sides are excellent on the song. So if I can play the flip side. So I checked my... I checked my boxes or checked a 45 cat and i see there is another uh this that times 45 on mgm came out with two alternate flip sides and actually <clears throat> you know which one you have because uh the t a touch of baby on the alternate release has parentheses around a touch of so i don't know what they did with that record but um the side that uh, uh leonard requested was hidden shores and again the song that song written by john lind bobby bloom and billy jackson of course also arranged by jimmy the Wiz wisner i have it but i couldn't find it in time i was planning on looking for the 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 Norma Ten Tenega record and the other side that uh, Leonard wanted, but I was going to play the flip side anyway. But uh, but Mark Speck beat me to it anyway. So let's flip over that Times record because it is a great two sided forty five. So it's from November sixty six. This is the alternate flip side or maybe the first flip side of a touch of baby. Again, it features. Uh, lead singer George Williams Jr. on lead the Times on MGM for Mark Speck. It's called What Would I Do? The Times. <laughs> Wondering why, why, 
That's an instant request for listener Mark Speck in our YouTube chat room. Those are the times, the times with the flip side, one of the alternate flip sides of A Touch of Baby, a song entitled What Would I Do? That's a big northern dancer tune that uh, Mark Speck uh, was aware of. And uh, Hidden Shores is the other one. I will find that one for Leonard Mancini, so stay tuned for that, Leonard, on a future show as we continue here. We fill a request for Edmund Williams, this group from Memphis, Tennessee, formed while attending Booker T. High School in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, first recording for Stax Records in November of 64. But the label moved them over to their subsidiary Volt Records. They had 15 releases on the Volt label. This was their first, a tune produced by Charles Axton. It features John Gary Williams on lead. This charted number 95 on Billboard, number 90 on Cashbox, 11 on the uh, Billboard R&B chart, and a big number one record on KDAY in Los Angeles, California. This is by request for Edmund Williams. I was also going to send it out to a Frank and a Jerry, a Frank and Jerry Gingaro. Frank is in our YouTube. Frank, I am uh, glad that uh, all is well, at least better. And we're going to send this one out, especially to Jerry. Please tell her that uh, we hope everything is okay, as we know it's getting better. So we will continue here. And this is for Edmund, Frank, and Jerry, the great sound of the Mad Lads from July 65. It's called You Don't Have to Shop Around. By request for Edmund Williams in Queens, New York. We'll also send that one out to Frank and Jerry Gingaro. The sound of the Mad Lads. The Mad Lads from July 1965. It's on the Volt record label. You Don't Have to Shop Around is the name of the two. Now, Edmund also requested the flip side of the 45, so we'll play the flip side 
for Edmund, this tune written by Isaac Hayes, J.R. Bailey, William C. Brown III, again produced by Charles Axton, and it's from July 65, the flip side of You Don't Have to Shop Around, the Mad Lads on Volt, it's called Tear Maker for Edmund. sides here on the vinyl treasure show there you go great a uh, a and b side there by request for edmund williams that's the flip side of you don't have to shop around uh by the mad lads there tear maker is the name of the tune let's go uh to this next request for listener bill olb in new jersey this gal born in philadelphia pa she would eventually record for Barry Gordy jr's motown empire in 1965 and later team up with uh, Tamla singing star Marvin Gaye had a number of hits for the Tamla label as Tammy Terrell and Motown Records is Tammy Terrell but her real name was Tammy Montgomery and uh, she also recorded uh, I think initially might have been for Fl uh, Florence Greenberg's Scepter label but uh, Bill requested her release on James Brown's Try Me label and a tune written by James Brown and Bobby Bird, produced by James Brown. This charted number eight, a 99 on Billboard, number six on WUST in Bethesda, Maryland. We go to April 1963 by request for listener Bill Olb, Tammy Montgomery on the Try Me label. It's called I Cried. I cried, I cried, my heart full of misery, I cried, and now it's your turn to cry for me, so many days gone by. Oh, 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 oh,
listen. Turn your record player down real low. So listen. You know you to tell him don't make me over cause any day now you know that everybody I said that everybody everybody loves lovers As by request for listener Bill Ope, she was using titles of songs at the end there. If you listen closely there, that's uh, Tammy Montgomery, a.k.a. Tammy Terrell, by request for Bill Ob, April 63 release on the Try Me record label. That's James Brown's label, I Cried, the name of the tune. Of course, James Brown would later record that for King Records in April of 71. He recorded that tune there. And uh, that is going out to Bill O. Bill O will be my in-studio guest for uh, his second gospel special here on the Vinyl Treasure Show. That'll be a Thursday afternoon beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern Time till 4 p.m. on May 9th, 2004, an all-gospel spiritual vocal group harmony show, including 60s soul gospel. So I'm, that's why I'm broadcasting it here on the 60s soul show. And uh, many uh, small, obscure record companies with limited artist releases and seldom heard classic gospel harmony album tracks. So you want to tune in. Uh, it's from the collection of Bill Olb and Gordy Freeman. And uh, there'll be some songs that were not played on the radio in years and years and years. So tune in on May 9th, 2024, Thursday afternoon. It's an afternoon show. Bill O will be here in the studio. You can check it out on my YouTube uh, uh, page. There is the show. It's up there. It says like, tw- you know, in 20 something days, it'll be there. But you can click it to get notified. So do that in advance. Johnny G here on a Wednesday evening. Let's continue here. Fill a request for a uh, listener, uh, Mark Langdale. Mark Langdale. And I lost my place. <laughs> Where is it? There you go. Um, Yes, Mark Langdale in Australia as we as we go to Detroit, actually, and this is a Motown record here uh, for listener Mark Langdale. This gal's real name, Agatha Weston, but she signed with Barry Gordy Jr.'s Tamla label in early 1963. She recorded as Kim Weston, and Mark requested her debut single. This is actually the B-side of her debut single. I will play the flip side, though, of this. That was my intention. This tune co-written by William Stevenson, produced by Norman Whitfield. This is from February 63, Kim Weston, her debut single for Mark Langdale in Australia. It's called It Should Have Been Me. This is from Mark. I saw my Begun to stand when I shouted, 
Jazz going out to uh, Mark Langdale in Australia. The sound of Kim West, and that's her debut single. Actually, slightly so, ever slightly so off center there on that side there. February 1963 on the Tamla label. It should have been me. But I think that was the B side. I think this is the intended A side of the 45 here. So let's play it here before I file it back down in the no humidity basement. Kim Weston, the flip side of It Should Have Been Me from February 63 on the Tamla label. It's called Love Me All The Way. Kim Weston. pretty powerful voice i don't think on her other later releases she's that powerful on her singing there but that is really powerful her debut single february 63 that's the flip side of uh, it should have been me as requested by mark langdale that's love uh, love me all the way the debut single for kim weston on the tamla record label let's go out to california now uh for the sound of the hollywood flames and this well there was only i think by this release date which was September 65. There was still one original member uh, with the group, and that was David Ford. He was still in the group. But they had two releases on uh, Juggy Murray's Symbol record label, I think um, a subsidiary of Sue Records. And uh, I think these were their two final singles. This was their first uh, written by group member at the time, John Berry, produced by Juggy Murray, uh, J.J. Uh, J. Jackson and Sidney Barnes. It features the lead here is George Watson. George Watson on lead from September 65, a late one by the Hollywood Flames on Symbol Records. It's called Dance Senorita. <laughs> i 
Hollywood Flames September 65 release their uh, first of two on the symbol label uh, features George Watson on lead dance Senorita is the name of the tune I had the other one pulled to play as I saw it in the box there so stay tuned for that on the next Vinyl Treasure show let's continue now and uh, here is a, a singer from Birmingham Alabama he is the brother of Roger Hatcher and the cousin to Edwin Starr and his uh, debut single came out in 1963 for the Thelma record label and he had other releases on Excello and King and Wand in Columbia and Wheelsville this one is on the Cotillion record label we go back to November of 1968 for Willie Hatcher Willie Hatcher on Cotillion Records it's called You Got Quality Willie Hatcher Quality Quality Don't ever change, little girl It will only lead to misery What you've given me i would never known before That's what keeps me knocking at your door You got quality, that's what I need You got quality, that's what keeps me so clean You got quality, that's what I need You got quality Only for the time can take me from your arms You got quality, that's what I need You got quality, that's what I need Quality. Quality. The way you walk, 
Well, I try to play quality songs on Wednesday evenings. Actually, all my shows, I try to do that. Hopefully I do, but there you go. Great sound there for Willie Hatcher. November 1968 release on Cotillion Records. You got quality. Yes, you do when you tune in here to the Vinyl Treasure Show as we continue here. And uh, both sides of this 45 are great. I think they are. Uh, Both sides produced by Robert Bateman, who engineered all those early early Motown tracks for Barry Gordy Jr., but he moved over to produce for Capitol Records, and uh, this is a fine example of what he can do. Uh, This uh, should have been a hit, but unfortunately it wasn't. This tune co-written by uh, Robert Bateman, arranged and conducted by Sammy Lowe, and uh, her name is Jill Harris. Jill Harris from June 64 on the Capitol Record label. The song is called Oh baby Jill Harris I think that's a cool record. I do. I like that sound there. Jill Harris there. Jill Harris, June 1964 release. It's on the Capitol Record label. Oh, baby is the name of the tune. Let's continue here on the Vinyl Treasure Show. It's a filler request for an uh, oldies fan in our YouTube chat room here. Is this singer uh, born Stevelyn Morris back in May, th- uh, May 13th, 1950 in Saginaw, Michigan. Singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, producer. And he was blind since birth, but through the years uh, he became a music icon and known throughout the world, of course. But he started a recording back in 1962. He was only 12 years old at the time. And uh, his first song was called I Call It Pretty Music. Music came out on uh, Barry Gordy Jr.'s uh, Tamla record label, and uh, Oldies fan requested his seventh 
release on the Tamla label, seven of 50 releases on the Tamla label, and it's a cover tune. This song was first done by Jojo Whale and the Somethings back in 1963 on the Smash record label. This tune written by Marty Cooper and Lou Josie, produced by Hal Davis and Mark Gordon, and this charted number 29 on Billboard, number 5 on the Billboard R&B chart, and number 3 on WKYO in uh, Caro, Michigan. We go to May of 1964. This is for uh, Joe, a.k.a. Oldies fan, in our YouTube chat room. Little Stevie Wonder. Little Stevie Wonder on the Tamla label. It's called Hey Harmonica Man for Joe. May 1964 release there for Little Stevie Wonder. It's on the Tamla record label request for Oldies Fan, a.k.a. Uh, Joe Smith, song entitled Hey Harmonica Man. He's playing the harmonica on that one, of course, as he did in many of his early sides he did. As we continue here on the Vinyl Treasure Show, let's fill a request for uh, Adrian Viterbo in our YouTube chat room. He's tuned in down in Mexico. This singer, she was a member of the 1950s vocal group The Hearts. Back in 1957, though, she went solo, uh, mentored by JNS label owner Zell Sanders, and uh, she recorded for a number of labels, though, through her career, besides JNS, also on Neptune and ABC Paramount, and Juggy Murray's Sue label, for example. Let's give a listen to her eighth of 16 she did on the Sioux label. Uh, this uh, charted number 98 on Billboard, number 22 on the R&B chart, a big number six record on KGFJ. If you are listening in Los Angeles, California, let's go to October 1964 for Miss Baby Washington. Baby Washington by request for Adrian in our YouTube chat room. It's called... Uh, I'll no. <laughs> it's called It'll It'll Never Be 
over for me, baby Washington, for Adrian. chances of having two records soul records with harmonicas in them one after another but there you go harmonica in that one there by request for listener adrian viterbo in our youtube chat room october 64 miss baby washington on sue records it'll never be over for me as this music will never be over for johnny g when it comes to music as it it fills our soul and makes us happy and sometimes brings back bad uh, sad memories but mostly good memories and that's why music is good for us and hopefully you're enjoying what johnny g is doing if you do please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel let's continue here for this next singer as uh, he is originally from detroit michigan is noted more for his songwriting though arranging and producing wrote his first song at 14 which was recorded by the marvelettes a song called a little bit of sympathy it was the flip of uh, the flip of your my remedy now motown wanted to sign him to a seven-year contract but he refused he refused he didn't want to commit for that long but here he is with his only release this originally came out on the giant label i think this record at least that record on giant sells for a mega bucks but then it was picked up by karate records that's how i have it on the karate label and uh, it's a song he uh, it's a song he wrote this a number one record on wjmo which is one of the stations that i want to do a countdown on wjmo in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Let's go to March of 66 for Mr. Tony Hester. Tony Hester on the karate label. It's called Just Can't Leave You. Tony 
Hester. go mr tony hester tony hester from march 66 on the karate label also first on the giant label i think that was jojo armstead's label i think if i'm not mistaken just can't leave you is the name of the tune also wrote songs for the dramatics for the dells for marilyn mccoo jimmy delphs the platters and so many others as the copyright police arrive on the scene just now just this moment they arrived on the scene let's continue here on the vinyl treasure show we fill a request for listener bob Cruise in Maryland. Not much is known about this group and this song, but it was a top 10 hit on WLAN in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, written and produced by Teddy Van. It came out on Nate McCalla's Calla record label. Now, Nate was an associate, an associate of Morris Levy. Now, should I say more? Well, the 45 comes two ways, by the way. The first pressing came out in January of 1967 with a talking intro. It was then re-released when the record started to become a hit. They re-released it about five months later without the intro. I have it both ways, but this is the one with the talking intro. Then we'll play a little bit of the other one to see how it how they changed it. But this is from... Um, Excuse me. This is from January 67. Frankie and the Classicals on the Cala label for listener Bob Cruz in Maryland. It's called What Shall I Do for Bob? My old love, he's with his new girlfriend. Isn't she pretty? Oh, he's looking my way. He's walking straight at me. What should I do? What should I do?
baby, what's happening with you? Nothing? Oh, that's too bad. And I just came around to see what was happening, to see if it was any new party. Oh, come on, you can do better than that now. Wes for Bob Cruz in Maryland. That's the sound of Frankie and the Classicals. Uh, that one there, January 1967, on the Cala record label. What Shall I Do is the name of the tune. That had the talking intro. So what they did is they just eliminated it. They just said, you know what? Let's just start it off. What do we need that talking intro for? And so when I first got the record, which I bought from, uh, I forget, Bill Obnos, who was uh, the owner of... Um, he was he, he had a he had an uh, a oh it was in Philadelphia and he had the lost he owned the Lost Night record label he also used to put out a catalog and sell records and it was like you had to give uh, alternates in case he couldn't you know fill them all and that's and I think there were a dollar when they were when I was buying them and you would just get this um you would, didn't really know what you were getting because he didn't put labels in there he just put the s- <coughs> song so you could be getting reissues on lost night or you could be getting originals like this so this is the this is the way that I had it the first time that I bought the record for a buck this is so you so you see they um they they uh they took the uh they took the talking intro out there with the with the uh, (laughs) violins and all that but there you go that's a by request for listener bob cruz let's continue here as this next singer born in the state of florida first recording in late 62 with a release on the Forest label, but let's give a spin to his overall second release, which came out on Juggy Murray's Symbol label. We just heard from the Symbol label with the uh, Hollywood Flames. Well, the Symbol label returns. The song written by uh, Jimmy Radcliffe, arranged by Burt Keys, from October 63. His name is Jimmy Helms. Jimmy Helms on the Symbol label. It's called... Um, your your mine you Jimmy Helms I never want to hear anyone sweet talking you like I do and I Looking at you like I do Cause you're mine You, you are mine I never want to find anyone Holding you like I do And I never want to catch anyone Kissing you like I do
October 63 release there for Jimmy Helms. Jimmy Helms on the symbol label. Your Mind You is the name of the tune. And um, <clears throat> he, uh, let me see. Uh, he would uh, have his next release about four years later, recorded for the Date label. Others followed on Oracle. He signed with Capitol in 1970, and uh, that was the uh, same time he starred in the musical Hair, and uh, he played the character HUD in, in the uh, musical Hair. There you go, October 63, Jimmy Helms on cymbal. Your Mind You is the name of the tune, is a copyright a copyright police first come into the come into the uh, Johnny G Vinyl Treasure Show. Please go away as we continue. And we feel a request for listener Edmund Williams. This is his third of 12 for James Brown on the Smash Record label. This tune written by Ted Wright, produced by James Brown. This charted number 24 on Billboard, number 5 on the uh, Billboard R&B chart, a big number 2 record on KROY in Sacramento, California. We go to July of 1965. For James Brown and his orchestra, and this is a vinyl press. This isn't that crappy styrene. This is a vinyl press. This is for Edmund Williams on Smash. It's called Out of Sight for Edmund. You got your high sneakers on, slipping you. You got your high sneakers on. And you're slipping new You're more than all right You know you're out of sight You got a shapely figure, mama That's keeping me up tight You got a shapely figure, mama That keep me up tight You're too much Know you're out of sight. Hey, the way you do the thing you do, the way you kiss me too, the way you do the thing you do, the way you kiss me too. My heart delight, that's what you are. You know you're out of sight. go that's going out to uh, edmund williams in queens new york that's his third of 12 on the smash record label james brown and his orchestra from july 1964 on smash records out of sight is the name of the tune johnny g's not going to be out of sight now we're going to do a little bit of overtime here because tomorrow i will be back tomorrow at 1 p.m eastern time for the uh the long-awaited seven a uh, 78 show all 78 show we'll be doing tomorrow so i'm i, I will be playing the the uh, 78s by year i think i open up from 1956 on the kaiser label and then uh, i think i start with 47 and then we count to 59 uh 49 
49, 50, 51, etc. But all on 78, many of them only on 78, and then some of the other ones are rare. I, I think I interject a couple because I need to kind of set the tempos up a little bit. I try to do that. I take pride in how I uh, do my playlist. So again, so I mix and match a lot of the songs to try to get an even flow, and the show kind of moves, you know, it just moves through, plus I interject experiences in my life of collecting these this music, and uh, you know, not many people can really do that. There are some that can do that because some uh, do shows but it's uh, you know a lot of people just play mp3s they just play them but you know i try to put out a good product out there i hope it shows because i just enjoy doing it so it brings me you know a lot of joy to do the show really it's a labor of love for your host johnny g so again if you're new to the program please subscribe we have some new listeners in the uh, chat room Hangar Sacco, thank you for subscribing to the uh, show. As uh, it's, uh, we do three shows here on YouTube. I'm live also on Oldies and More Radio. Uh, I simultaneously broadcast there on the stream. But I'll be back tomorrow at one o'clock for the uh, one till one thirty uh, p.m. Eastern time. And Saturday, it's my uh, big show. I have a big show on Saturday night at nine p.m. I play fifties and early sixties records there in a chronological order by year. So if you have a special request, you can send it to me at vinyl treasures at aol.com. That is the contact number for your host Johnny G. Now, um, last week I played a James Brown uh, song for Edmund. Uh, a song called uh, Signed, Sealed, and Delivered. That was as James Brown and the Famous Flames. That was on Sid Nathan's King record label. And uh, the flip side, uh, he also requested, Edmund also requested the flip side, which is actually a song written uh, and first recorded by Ivory Joe Hunter back in 1949. Now, James Brown had a serious side too. Like one of the records I like that he does is called Prisoner of Love. Uh, I think it's from 64 also or 62 maybe. And Bewildered is another great, he has some great ballads. Let's put it that way. We'll put the ballads there versus the up tempos. But this is a ballad uh, from September 63. So this is a flip side request for Edmund Williams in Queens. James Brown and the Famous Flames on King Records. It's called Waiting in vain for Edmund Williams. <laughs> Somebody eat 
There's a twin spin with Mr. James Brown. That's James Brown and the Famous Flames uh, from September 63 on uh, King Records. Waiting in Vain is the name of the tune. Johnny G, not waiting in vain. We are oh, we are just continuing here in Vinyl Treasure Overtime. And uh, this next singer born in Davisboro, Georgia, he relocated to Chicago, Illinois. His name was Luscious Brinson Johnson, first recorded as Luther, first on the Apt label in 1961, then had a release on the Crisscross label and also Dot Records in 62. Here's one he did on Leonard Chess's Checker Record label, and uh, he, I think he would have just one more record on Tar X in 66. And uh, he was later known as Luther Snake Boy Johnson, but on this release, he's known as Little Luther. Let's go to October of 1964 for Little Luther on the Checker label. I'm going to send this one out to listener Dennis Flew Hardy, because I know he likes blues 45s. L- Little Luther with Eeny Meeny Miney Mo. Little Luther on the checker label. Eeny Meeny Miney Mo. I got cones on my toes. Mighty mo, yeah. I got cones on my toe. Be the mighty mo, I got cones on my toe. I can't dog, I can't mock it no more. In the mighty mighty mo, in the mighty mighty mo. You know they hate me so. In the mighty mighty mo, yeah. You know they hate me so. Mighty Mo, you know they hate me so I used to do the twist, but I don't no more Any mini Mighty Mo I used to go to dance, but I don't no more These bad seats won't let me go I can't walk, I can't creep I got to do something about these bad seats Any mini Mighty Mo Any mini Mighty Mo I can't stand it no more I mean, it might have more, yeah. I can't stand it no more. In a minute, it might have more. I can't stand it no more. Either these corner the feet got to go. In a minute, it might have more. In a minute, it might have more. There you go. His name is Little Luther. Little Luther from October 64 on the Checker record banner there. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo is the name of the tune. Let's continue here in Vinyl Treasure Overtime as uh, in, uh, this gal uh, made her debut in 1965 on the Blue Rock record label as Janine Henry it was a song called Baby Boy. Her real name, and- Andrea Janine Henry, and in 1966, she had this release on the MGM record label as Andrea Henry. This is produced by Herman Griffin, and uh, let's give a spin here to uh, Andrea Henry from January 68. I think this is an in-demand song, if I'm not mistaken. Mark Speck, you can correct me. Andrea Henry on MGM. It's called I Need You Like a Baby, Andrea Henry. Henry.
I get caught from time to time here chatting with the <laughs> chatting with the listeners. There you go. What a great sound that is. I think that's a pretty cool record. Andrea Henry. Andrea Henry, January 68 release on the MGM record label. I Need You Like a Baby is the name of the tune. I don't have her release on... Um, on uh, Blue Rock. I'd love to have it, though. I would. John and G would love to have a lot of different records here. I am here in Vinyl Treasure Overtime. Why are the copyright police coming out when I'm talking? <laughs> that is, like, messed up. It is so messed up that they are. We're going to continue with a little bit more here because I, I got the All 78 show tomorrow, so we'll see how that one goes. But let's continue here. Uh, you all know this next singer from Latta, South Carolina, but he was raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and he was a member of the Dell Vikings before he went solo, and he recorded as Charles Jackson, first on Clock Records in 1959, but he signed with Juan in 61 and we played a record or somebody covered a song that we did I forget a Perlene um oh what was her name I forget her name see how I forget uh, we did we did I don't want to cry was his big hit in 1961 but he had 32 releases on the Juan label through 1968 this was his 25th and this charted on uh, 23 on WJMO, if you were listening in Cleveland, Ohio. Let's go to October of 1966 for Mr. Chuck Jackson. Chuck Jackson on the wand label. It's called I've Got to Be Strong, Chuck Jackson. Here comes the hurt I'll always have Here comes the life that's both so sad But I know I've got to be strong Cause I know I can carry on But there goes the girl that broke my heart There goes the girl that tore it apart From my wall The guy that's got her Live down the hall Here are the cigarettes That she left Even got her earrings Laying on my chest But I know I got to be strong Cause I know I got to carry on But there goes the girl That broke my heart There goes the girl That's Chuck Jackson. Chuck Jackson from October 66. It's on the Wand record label. I've Got to Be Strong is the name of the tune. He also does some duets with Maxine Brown. Lots of releases on the Wand record label. We are in Vinyl Treasure Overtime. Again, if you're new to the program, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click the bell there. You need to uh, hit the drop down to get all notifications. If you don't, you'll just get recommendations. It'll come up at random. You'll see it, uh, I guess, if you go... Uh, like uh, uh, thumbing through YouTube, you know how they make recommendations. They try to, the AI tries to read your mind and tries to, and I don't know, a lot of people are finding out about the show because um, the subscription rate has gone up considerably. That's one thing that YouTube was happy about, but I don't like it when they shut me down because of copyright issues. That's why I can't take a big hit requests. It just isn't going to work on this type, in, in this um uh, you know, on this platform, because, uh, you know, everybody wants a piece of the action. They want to, and I don't know how to, how to even fix that. 
you know but uh anyway we just uh we just let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that they don't pull the video down but if they ever do you know you can always go to vinyltreasures.net because i house all the streams on my website there vinyltreasures.net is the name of the tune let's uh, go to this girl group trio three sisters from bakersville california they are rachel uh lupe and francis hernandez and uh, they had uh, six, they they had a, a 1962 release on the Garpax label called Boy Trouble. This is their first of two on uh, Frank Sinatra's Reprise record label, tune written by uh, Kenneth Johnson, arranged by Gary Paxton. Let's go to June of 63. They're called the Revlons. The Revlons on Reprise Records. It's called I Can't Forget about you, the Revlons. Well, I can't eat and I can't sleep and I'm all thumbs got two left feet Well, I'm all wrong ain't nothing right I just toss and turn all night Cause I'm tongue tied. I walk along, my head bent down, just kicking rocks along the ground. Oh, there's nothing I can say, and nothing I can do. Because no matter what, I can't forget about you. That's the first of two for the Revlons, R-E-V-L-O-N-S. June 63, it's on Reprise Records. It's called I Can't Forget About You is the name of the tune. Let's continue in Vinyl Treasure Overtime for this next singer. Originally from uh, Philadelphia, but he was raised in Jacksonville, Florida. First recorded uh, with the, uh, the Rockin' Tonics. Uh, but in 1968, he would have a release on the Atco label. Then he did two on Minute Records. This was his first where he added background vocals uh, to the track. He laid them down, and they were done by the Ohio Untouchables. They added those vocals onto this. This is from September 69. His name is Herman Hitson. Herman Hitson, it's on Minute Records. It's a crappy Styrene 45, and I hate Styrene Records, but let's give it a spin. The song is called Yes, You Do. Herman Hit, H I T S O N. Herman Hitson. Every day, such a bore. 
That's September 69, released there for uh, Herman Hitson. Herman Hitson on the minute label. Yes, You Did is the name of the tune. A couple more records to go. Johnny G will be out of here. As we go back to Philadelphia, PA, this group initially uh, recording in 1965 uh, for the Scepter label as Irma and the Fascinators. Here is their very next release as this came out on the local priority record label. It would later be picked up by Fairmount Records. I have it on the first press. Priority Records, a tune written by Eddie Holman and James Solomon. It features Irma Jackson on lead. From May 1966, here are Herma and the Larks. This is on the priority label. It's called Without You Baby, Irma and the Larks. Johnny G getting caught here. There you go. That is uh, that is uh, Irma and the Larks. Irma and the Larks from May six uh, May sixty six featured it on the first label. That being Priority Records. Song entitled "Without You, Baby." Well, you're going to be without Johnny G. That's going to do it for Johnny G and the Vinyl Treasure Show. I want to thank you for joining Johnny G. Listening to these cool sixties forty fives out of my collection. If you need to get in touch with me for a request. To communicate with me, tell me if you like the show, please do that at vinyltreasures at AOL.com. That is the all request line, and that is the way you get in touch with your host, Johnny G. So thank you all for being here uh, this evening, as uh, Charlene did a great job uh, today helping me so much to put together the show. I couldn't do it without Charlene. I really couldn't. So uh, she helped me quite a bit today, as she always does with all the shows. So thank you, Charlene, for that. I will be back tomorrow afternoon, beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, for the uh, All 78 show. I have... um, well, um, let me see. Let me see. What's this record here? No, we don't want to show that one. That was that was a hit. The um, this was the last record I had to play. Um, if I get to it, I'm gonna play one record from '58 because the '58 78s are. I don't even know how I'm gonna do it because I don't want to get. I can't get my fingers on the set on on the vinyl. I cleaned all these things. Maybe I'll have maybe I'll have rubber gloves on when I hold these records. But if I, a couple people have told me, Johnny, be careful you don't drop the seventy because if you drop this, they're gonna break. I don't. I think I have one flexi disc tomorrow. It's just one. 
but uh, anyway, so if you'll, it should be interesting because a lot of them are early sounds way before, I was born in 58, so those are way before Johnny G was born, like 11 years maybe going, but, uh, and maybe for most of the, well, some of the, some of the listeners tomorrow are into the early sides. I know that for a fact. So if you're into, if you're, so we're trying it out tomorrow. I know there were so many that wanted me to do it for a long, long time. I didn't want to play, you know, I could have played uh, like, you know, church bells may ring in some hits. I will have some records that are on 45 because they sound so great on 78. That's what they do. But uh, I'll be back Saturday night. That's the big show. If you have any requests, you can send them to me. I already received a lot of requests for the show, vinyltreasures.net. So I play the music by year. I'll play it by year tomorrow, too. But this show, no, it's kind of like a mishmash of all the years of soul music. And some borderline soul, lots of northern soul, too. But thank you all for being here uh, today, as I hope you enjoyed yourself. It's uh, a lot of fun to do it. That's really the name of the game. It's a fun to listen to these records. Records. That's the main thing, to have fun. And uh, we're going to close the show tonight uh, with this singer. I dig this singer a lot. Um, this singer born in Arkansas, but he relocated to Compton, California. He was the lead singer of a vocal group called The Symbols. And uh, they had a release on the Amazon label that came out in 62. I have that. Don't know if I played it on the show. But... Uh, the, he wrote that song called One Step Too Far. Now, he would record, uh, the record would be re-released under his own name two months later after he signed with, wait a minute, VJ Records? Okay, I didn't know that. Um, he would have his biggest hit for VJ uh, called Ooh Wee Baby. I love you, which is that that was the one I was looking for. I didn't find it, but I found this one. But this is the follow up to that hit. His second of three for VJ, a tune written and produced by Richard Parker. This charted number 96 on Billboard, number um, 93 on Cashbox, number 12 on the RB chart, and a big number five record if you were listening on KATZ in St. Louis, and also a big one on WAWA Wawa in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Our closer tonight is from July 65 on VJ Records, Mr. Fred Hughes. Fred Hughes with You, you Can't take it away and that is a definite you can't take johnny g's music away so thank you all for being here uh tonight again those of you that uh, have not yet subscribed to my youtube channel please do that and uh, again if you if you really enjoyed the show tonight please give me a thumbs up and uh, thank you oldies and more radio for carrying the vinyl treasure show i will see everybody some of you tomorrow uh, afternoon. If not, I'll see you Saturday night. If not, I'll see you back here next Wednesday for more Cool Soul records out of my collection. Just want to say, everybody, so long. Here is Fred Hughes. <laughs> sunny day The clouds can come and take it away A clear view from a window pane Can soon end with the drops of rain But there's a love I have for you 